So the Jacksonville Jaguars lose to the San Francisco 49ers today, 30-10. to 10. And I'm typically the Jaguars fan when I'm doing recaps and preview videos that's optimistic, um, always pointing out the positives. But today is a day to dwell and to rant, but respectfully, right? Um, I'm not as energetic as I usually am. The Jaguars got their butts kicked at home, respectfully. And it is tiring to attend these games and a tailgate and to give my money and my heart and emotion and my soul and my time and my passion into the Jaguars 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Doesn't mean I'm ever going to jump ship. I'm a Jaguar to the day I die and I love my team. But I'm a very emotional, diehard, passionate fan, as you guys know. And how much love I have for my Jaguars is through the roof. You guys can only imagine, right? And I know we all are all a part of the Jaguars community. We all love and support the Jaguars. You know, some fans are more fair weather than others, but that's not the point of this video. My love for my Jaguars and the community is so deeply rooted. And it's hard. It, it definitely puts a little knife in me every single time I see the Jaguars get their butts handed to them, plain and simple. And today was no different. The Jaguars lost 30-10. to 10. The penalties was a huge discrepancy. And that wasn't the refs. That was the Jaguars helping self-inflicted pains. Eight penalties for 56 yards. The San Francisco 49ers, one penalty for 12 yards. Bad enough, right? The Jaguars are not a very talented team talent-wise, right? We're in the first year of a rebuild. Rookie quarterback, rookie staff, you don't need me to tell you the whole story. So the Jaguars talent-wise aren't that great. But when you have self-inflicted wounds, Jaguars had four critical fourth down stops in the third in the first half of the game. Four critical third down stops that they had. And three of them resulted in penalties. Too many men on the field. I believe a holding in the secondary. Rayshon Jenkins having a fight after the play. And then there was a fourth down that they kicked a field goal to make it 3-0. The Jaguars were down 20-3 to at the half. The Jaguars' first three possessions were three and out. I believe it was a punt. Or, um, excuse me, the second possession was a fumble by LaVisca Chanel. And then the third possession was a field goal by Matthew Wright at the end of the half to make it 17-3, to but then it was eventually 20-3 to for the half. So the Jaguars, not so good there, right? I'm not worried about Trevor Lawrence. You know, I, I, I did leave the game atop of the fourth quarter because it was a huge discrepancy. And all I heard behind me the entire game was, that's good for another 49ers first down. Woo, 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 woo. I mean, an abundance of 49ers fans behind me. Great for y'all. If 49ers fans are watching this video, you know, I wish y'all nothing but the best of luck moving forward. I don't hold grudges. But... This team is just not talented enough, right? And we're in the first year of a rebuild. I'm not going to sit here and overreact. It just sucks. You know, like I said, when I put my emotion, heart, soul, my time, my energy, and my devotion to the Jaguars, just for them to go and get absolutely blown out of the waters, to put it nicely, every single Sunday it feels like, not really, but, you know, today, it doesn't feel good, but... This is the second game of the season where the Jaguars have had zero positives to take away from the game. Zero. And I'm a very positive person, right? There's always positives you can take away. There was none today. Zero. From Rayshon Jenkins fighting to the undisciplined work from the team with penalties to Shaquille Griffin going into concussion protocol. Trevor Lawrence actually looked pretty fine today, right? Like I said, I left in the fourth quarter. I didn't see James Robinson's touchdown or anything like that. But Trevor Lawrence was making throws. Trevor Lawrence was putting the ball where it needed to be, like usual. Receivers like Marvin Jones didn't catch the ball, or LaVisca Chenault is fumbling the ball, or the offensive line was playing pretty well for the most part, but, you know, they allowed some QB pressures and some hurries. Trevor's not the problem with this team. Trevor's far from the problem with this team. And you guys don't need me to tell you this, that we need to go and get wide receivers and talented skill position players this year in the draft and through free agency. But I just wanted to give my thoughts here today. I'm obviously venting and ranting, but I'm doing it in a calm manner because that's how I'm feeling. There was nothing to be excited about today, but there was one good part of today that I would like to share with you guys. Well, two parts. The Jaguars 
had an AFC South opponent in the Tennessee Titans, our probably our biggest divisional rival, lose to the Texans today. Regardless of playoff implications, that's nice. We like to see the Texans beat the Titans. We don't like the Titans, so that was very nice. Let me share the other part with you guys. I got my first flag today, you guys. Duval together. I got my first flag, and it was free. My little sister was able to get it off some people, so go Jags. But long story short, the Jaguars got absolutely demolished next week. I want to be very clear. I do not want to talk 2022 NFL draft until the very end of the year. Do not come to me talking about draft. I am not worried about that. The next thing I'm worried about is the Atlanta Falcons. I'm worried about next week. I'm not worried about the draft. I'm not worried about the Rams. I'm worried about the Falcons. The game's over. Let's move on to next week. That's what I'm worried about. But next week's vlog is going to be great. There wasn't a vlog today because what was there to vlog? There was nothing to cheer about today. So hopefully the Jaguars come out next week much more prepared, come out with a better game plan, and hopefully come out with the win next Sunday versus the Atlanta Falcons. Obviously, I'll be in attendance yet again. I have some good friends and family coming with me to the game, so that ought to be fun. And Daryl Bevel is the only person on the staff that needs to be gone next season. That's it. Joe Cullen, Urban Meyer, and everyone else on this staff needs to remain intact for next year. Daryl Bevel is the only person who needs to go next year. But it's not really too much his fault considering what talent does he have on the offensive end. Really. But that's besides the point. Jaguar fans, I'd like to hear your thoughts down below. Try to be somewhat respectful because I'm being somewhat respectful. And if you guys enjoyed the content, make sure you guys like, turn on notifications, and hit that subscribe bell to stay tuned. For more Jacksonville Jaguars content, sorry I don't sound very enthusiastic today, but go Jaguars, DTWD, love you guys, thank you Jaguars community, Jags Nation, Duval Mafia, etc. I'm out y'all, have a great day, go Jags.